back to my channel. In this episode, I want to show you how to install electrical back box. Please do subscribe if you like the channel, give us a thumbs up, it's absolutely free, it doesn't cost you anything, but encourage me to uh, to make more videos because I'll show that obviously you guys actually like it and you're actually interested in the crap after the site. With electrics, just uh, again, if you're going to do your own electrics, it's perfectly fine to do your electrics, just make sure obviously you turn your electrics off when you actually start uh, turning around. And tell, if anybody's in the house, tell people that you turn the electrics off because I've seen it in the past. Uh, somebody's turned electrics off, the muck around electrics, somebody, uh, somebody else in the house goes, oh, this is not working, and bang, turn the electrics on, and then the person working with electrics gets an almighty belt. <laughs> Trust me, it's not comfortable, it hurts. Uh, if, uh, you can do your own electrics in your own house, as long as you're like, on a small scale, but always get a spark in just to check it over, just to make sure your work is actually sound. So with the back box here, very simple. This is a 35mm uh, depth one. Can you see that? 35mm. I like the 35mm boxes because they're almost like the Goldilocks porridge, you know, the porridge thing, not too hot, not too cold. To me they're like that because you can get smaller ones or narrow ones and you can get bigger ones. The narrower ones, when they're actually installed, yes you don't have to remove as much material, but once you're installed and then you've got the wire poking out, there's not as much space to put the wire back in. Obviously the bigger ones, you've got more space, but you've got to remove more material, so it's a bit more of an ag. Uh, so that's why I think these ones are the perfect size. So, to set up your box, what do you need to do? Well, first of all, you need to know the environment. What's, what's, what's your end result? That's the most important thing is, what, what, what do you expect this job to be? What are you looking for? Now, in this situation, it is, this is just a utility, straight through to the toilet. So I'm going to have the toilet door here, which is going to hinge out onto that wall. This will be a tower unit, obviously for storage. There's going to be a little worktop here, and inside there's going to be like a white good, like a washing machine, because that's where the waste pipe's going to be and everything else. So, now I know that, I can just leave the wall bare. In this, you know, I think, if, if you've got a utility, you like to have the ability to have a socket. So because of that, I know my towel unit is 600. So I'm going to mark 600 on the wall. There. There. I know white goods. White goods are, even though the actual unit itself might not be 600 wide, the socket or the hole which it slides into is a standard 600. That's what they are. So, as we know that, we've got our first 600 mark, always measure from the same point. You then mark your other 600 there, which obviously is 1200 total. There will be a plate face, as it were, here. You now know that you've got your 600 gap here with a little bit of 600 work top with your white good going underneath. Now you know that, you know, right, I need a PowerPoint for the washing machine, dishwasher, whatever you want to put there. It doesn't really matter so much where that one is, as long as it's out of the way. Bear in mind, washing machines are not as deep as dishwashers. If it is a dishwasher, a dishwasher goes to full depth back, washing machines stop around about four, uh, 450 to 500, a little bit narrow. So that's something else to bear in mind when you're doing it. If it is a dishwasher, make sure your sockets not behind the unit, make sure it's off to one side. If it's a washing machine, it can actually go behind it. But nonetheless, you've got your 600 markings, you know that's worked top. Measure in the middle of that, that will then obviously be 300, that's your centre point. Now, the height is the next issue. If you don't know the height that you want to work at, simply go to your kitchen, measure from the floor how high uh, how high that socket is, because obviously the reason why I say your kitchen, because that's got a work top in it. That's got all the bits and pieces which pretty much this will have. I've just done that a moment ago, I've got four foot. So I'm going to go up to that, I'm going to measure four foot. I'm going to get my box, 
It doesn't have to be the size. I mean, you're not working to the mill here. That's not sort of a. You can be a bit butcherish. It can be slapdash. You know, that will do sort of attitude because again, it's not your final final res uh, result. So you want to roughly get that in the centre. Pencil mark around the box. Right, missed that one point. Because when you actually look at these boxes, a lot of sparkies, a lot of people will go, right, okay, there's me marker on the wall, just drill a hole down, a, a channel down the middle, and, uh, and that, that's where I'm going to run the wire. The problem which you will have with that is, as I bring this up close, if you do a channel down the middle, your wire will then want to be there. But as you can see, these are off to one side. It's the same with the, the smaller ones, like the single sockets. So what I always do, is where you've done your pencil mark, is go to the edge. And the reason why I go to the edge, because when you've got the wire poking out, you've got to try and visualise your wire poking out, and you've got, I don't know, 8 inches, 10 inches of, of, uh, of the stuff. you can then got all this space to call the wire back in, and then obviously you put your, your finishing plate on. Now that helps out in the future, because then if you ever want to change the socket, uh, sorry, the cover plate, you can pull it off, you've got plenty of wire to work with, you're not working like with minuscule bits of wire and then you're there battering and struggling to get it all in. So, just to, uh, to obviously just bear that in mind. Now, spirit levels, I mean semi decent ones, but most spirit levels are quite thick, but not too thick. It's, what well, mine is, 30 centimetres. So it's actually quite a good little depth to that. And also, a good thing about spirit level, is that it shows you straightness of the work. So pencil mark a straight line and then twist it around, get your left hand side on the my situation, left hand side exposed so you can see the, the line. And again measure the thickness of your spirit level. Well sorry mark the, the thickness of your spirit level. That now will give you roughly an inch channel. It's actually a little bit bigger than an inch, but nonetheless it'll give you an inch channel. And then once you get your, your small one lined up, when you use pencil mark around that, you can actually then physically see. When you actually put your, the box there, you can actually see that point in there where you grommet, your, your uh, rubber grommet to protect uh, the wire from the boxing because it's a metal boxing. But where that is and the channel, it goes straight into there. You can see, I've actually penciled mark around, so you can actually see the lines. Now, what a lot of people now will go ahead and do, is they'll get their angle grinder, and they will go, right, here we go, and they'll cut right to those lines. If you cut on those lines or outside those lines, what you'll be left with, you'll have a gap. Yes, it makes it a little bit easier to install, because you know you've got uh, room to, to play. But if you don't want to, go along with some filler and fill all those gaps in and make sure it's nice and tight then I suggest you cut within those lines you literally want to keep on my situation on this uh, on the left hand side I want to see the pencil mark on the uh, left hand side of the blade I'll see it on the right hand side so forth and up and down blah 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 yes it does make it a bit tighter but you know once it's in there, it's in there, it's not going to move around, it's not going to, you don't have to worry about too many fastenings, it's a lot easier to install. And it looks better, it saves you going around with the old filler and whatnot and trying to make it look good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut those out, I'm going to show you how to wire them up. See you in a bit.
that's why it's important to wear full respiratory safety gear because breathing that stuff in, it's not going to be good. God, look at me here. Beautiful. Right, quick update to my fellow DIYers. That's doing it yourself, not the other DIYers, doing it yourself. Now, what, what you, uh, lost my words, to start again. What you can see is what I've, I've done the channel. For this one, I've got to move it one over. Got to do a little uh, jump to block there, and then run the new wire down under here. That, it doesn't have to be sunk within the wall down here. It's simply going to be exposed, because obviously you've got the units. I'm going to obviously take that along the wall here, feed it up. Going to this top box, I've really ran one wire here. Just quickly show you so you've got an idea of what I'm checking about. Now, one wire here. So this wire is going to go in the back of the socket. This wire is also going to go back in the back of the socket, but I'm going to have the that one up there. I'm going to run down this channel, around here, through the grommet, which is, let's pop that out. That's a grommet. That slides in that hole, it actually slots in there so it doesn't fall out. That's going to go right through there, through here. Most importantly, when you do square that up, when, uh, when you do any sort of wiring, you've got to what's known as capping. It's this stuff actually goes within there. I'll make this a little bit wider, admittedly. And unless that goes in there and it covers the wire, it stops you uh, stop from accidentally drilling through it. Well, it doesn't, but you know, it does. Right, guys, we are now at a pre capping stage. What I mean by the capping stage is obviously this stuff here, which I described earlier. That's obviously got to go over the actual wires before you bond it all in place. But I'll be doing that after the video. So, what we've got here now, we've got the wire that was what up here. Now, it run, runs down within this channel I've done. It goes all the way through. This socket down here, it goes into the box, but continues straight up. And wires directly into this uh, this double socket here. I then got another wire that goes down to this single one, which wires in the back of that, and then off the back of that runs back out again, and then through into the wall to obviously pick up the uh, the power supply that's came from the toilet room, comes with the boiler, which to uh, that finally actually com uh, that that completes the actual ring main. Obviously, ring main is literally a ring. Whole point of a ring main is you can actually up the current circuit. To 30 amps rather than the 20 amps because obviously you can it draws power from both sides as it were rather than just one single wire so <clears throat> i'm going to show you up close obviously the the purpose of doing things the way i've done it so as you can see my when i've done the actual angle grinding i kept the angle grinder within the wires it doesn't matter obviously if you oh, sorry not wires lines it doesn't matter if you spill over because you're going to plaster it anyway but see how nice and tight that is. That's nice and tight. Everyone likes it tight. So uh, yeah, so that and obviously the same down here. What I've done at the bottom there is that I've actually channeled out this little slope here. The reason being because again this wire obviously is not being channeled in, so therefore we need a little this little slope just so you can uh, obviously just ease it out so you're not bending the wire too much. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna fit the sockets back. Do my cappings, get it all bonded in for the next video. I might do it then, I don't know. I'll think about that. But anyway, if you found this video interesting, give it a like, so give it uh, give it a subscribe. Uh, if it's answered, then hopefully it's answered the questions. That would be nice if you can answer, because that's the whole point of watching these videos, so they do actually answer the questions. Um, nonetheless, give it a thumb up, subscribe, join me again for my next video. I look forward to seeing you guys. Well, I don't see you, you see me, so you must look forward to seeing me. So, hey, hey, hey. Um, see you then. Bye-bye.